Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, make us worthy to celebrate with spiritual hymns your appearance to Thomas and your apostles. You desire to strengthen the faith of your Holy Church by inviting Thomas to put his hand into your pure side. Strengthen our faith like his in the mystery of your glorious resurrection. Fill us with your hope and love so that we may raise glory to you, to your Father and to our to our li your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Praise, glory, honor, and praise to God the Father who sent his only begotten Son for the salvation of the world. And to the Son who filled the universe with a new light by his glorious resurrection. And to the Holy Spirit who embraced the hearts of the apostles with joy and with peace. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Christ our God, by your glorious resurrection, you gave joy to those in heaven and on earth, uniting them spiritually as one. Eight days later you visited your holy apostles and entered the upper room where they were gathered with the door shut. You invited Thomas to see and to put his hands into your pierced, the side pierced by the lens and to touch your hands wounded by the nails. He proclaimed his faith, crying out, My Lord and my God. And you made him a witness to your glorious resurrection. Therefore, we who have been saved by your victorious cross, Implore your grace and ask you, with the fragrance of this incense, to grant us the blessings that you be promised to those who have not seen you and yet believe. Make us worthy to celebrate this new Sunday with joy and gladness, and prepare us and our departed for that joyful and eternal feast that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your living Holy Spirit forever.
Christ our God, accept our incense as we commemorate your appearance to your apostle St. Thomas. As you were pleased by his faith and profession of your divinity, accept our prayers and our petitions, and favorably be remember all the faithful departed who have died hoping in you, and grant them eternal rest. We raise glory and thanks to you, now and forever. Amen. Kadishat Aloha. second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, therefore, 
Since we know the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others. But we are clearly a parent to God, and I hope we are also a parent to your consciousness. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast of us so that you may have something to say to those who boast of external appearance rather than of the heart. For if we are out of our minds, it is for God. If we are rational, it is for you. For the love of Christ impels us. Once we have come to the conviction that one died for all, therefore all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him so no longer. Whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting us to the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Praise be to God always. Alleluia. Alleluia. You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen yet have come to be. For the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle John writes, Now on the eighth day, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. And Jesus came, although the doors were locked. And he stood in their midst and he said to them, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Place your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and place it into my side. And be not unbelieving, but believe. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, 
And Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through his belief, this belief, you may have life in his name. This is the truth, peace be with you. Henceforth, we know no man according to the flesh. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This is a very strange phrase. From now on, we don't know anyone according to the flesh. In other words, our minds have been transformed. We see things, we judge things, and hence we act in a manner that's different than before our conversion. I encourage you to read this whole chapter 5 of the second letter to the Corinthians because it gives that aspect of why this transformation takes place. And when I was in the midst of my studies, as far as a transformation of mine, and they sent me off to continue and to finish my studies for years in Switzerland, I was sent off at the age of 22 college, of course, so the age was normal. And I arrived in the canton in the state of Switzerland known as Valis, or in French, Valais. And it's one of the states, most people don't know this, it's one of the states that is Catholic in Switzerland. They're about half and half the Swiss. They've kept it very consci consciously kept half Protestant, half Catholic throughout the centuries to keep the consensus and the balance for which the Swiss are known. But having landed in the Le Valis at 22, an American, it was a complete eye-opener for me because I had never been in a Catholic country. I had never been in a Catholic state. I have never seen a society that was organized around the Catholic faith. That every holy day was a holy day and it was observed that every Sunday was truly a Sabbath, truly a day of rest dedicated to the Lord. So to live in an environment where St. Joseph is a public holiday, there's no mail, you go to Mass, the stores are closed, you're not shopping, you're at home with your family after you have been with God. And it blew me out of the water. Because in America, as a Catholic seminarian, I had read about this, that this is what Catholic society used to look like. But I was able, and it was a great gift in the 1980s, to be able to see the very edge and the end of a Catholic community. They're not that anymore. And when I arrived there, it was probably 98% of the population were baptized Catholics. And a handful of them would be at Mass on Sunday, already in the 80s. But you'd have newspapers, they'd be there, December, it was Christmas time, Christmas shopping, of course. But what you had were immaculate conception sales. Front page, full page advertiser for the local grocery store for the immaculate conception sale. That Corpus Christi was a holiday. In the neighboring state of Freiburg, on the feast of Corpus Christi, they would fire cannons off in the, from the citadels, from the castles and the mountains at 5 a.m. to make sure everyone's awake for the huge procession that's going to go on because they would build these enormous altars, four of them around the city, 
And the Blessed Sacrament, it would take hours for this procession of celebration of the bands and the music. And at each of these altars, each of the four Gospels would be read of the Last Supper. It is a different vision. And the reason why I give it to you is not just to be nostalgic of a world that no longer exists, but as a reminder of what New Sunday actually means. We call it New Sunday because it is historically the commemoration of all things being made anew. The translation that we had translated as saying, behold, new things come which isn't actually what it says in the Greek. It says, behold, all things are made anew. They're renovated. They are made newly something again. That is New Sunday. It's a commemoration of the renewal of time and of space and of the cosmos by the resurrection. It's a very profound and very ancient idea. And so what we're going to do over these next couple weeks, these next few weeks, is we'll do a pause in our progression through the liturgy of its explanation. And we will consider the eighth day, the Sabbath, the day of the Lord, the Kyriake it's known as. So you have already a long bulletin written up, reflections, that will give you uh, considerations to be looking at already, and the scripture quotations. But today I just want to leave you with the notion of the Old Testament Sabbath. Shabbat just means rest. That's all it means. It doesn't mean the seventh day. It's on the seventh day, the Saturday. The first day of the week is Sunday. And that will come into the calculations and the considerations of the fathers of what is the Lord's day as we progress. But today, the Father's origin and Eusebius. So you have here men. <clears throat> origin is born about the year 180. So to put it into a historical hat rack, Origin is born in a year which is just about the same distance as the child born on 9 11 was distant from the Civil War about 150 years. So from our Lord's glorification, a century and a half, that's when Origen is born. Origen's father is a martyr. He died for the faith during the persecutions. And when he dies at the beginning of the, th the third or the middle of the third century, you have just shortly after that, the birth of Eusebius. And he's going to die in 339, I believe. So between these two men, you have a witness to the apostolic faith over a period for the second half of three centuries following our Lord. And so that's why even though they're not considered saints, their writings are profoundly important because they're showing us what is the thinking of the apostolic church. How do they think? How do they act? And how do they think and act surrounded by a population that is 98% pagan? That is what is also important. We whine, we wring our hands, but it's not a Catholic country. We don't live this way. We don't, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. I live in the same world. I know it's hard. But that's why we use the quotation in this beginning from today's epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Henceforth, from now on, we don't know anyone according to the flesh. Our minds is not merely natural and naturalistic and purely human. Our mind is not inspired by the principles of CNN or Fox or whatever kind of natural thing that is around us. Our minds are transformed and our thinking are not according to men, but according to God in that renewal of all things of New Sunday. So in the Old Testament, of the Sabbath, and we know the Sabbath was important, we just commemorated it on Good Friday. They want the bodies down because it's sunset on Friday, and not only is it the Sabbath, it's a greater Sabbath because it was also for some of their calendars corresponding with the Passover. 
And this is why you have the distinction where they break the legs to make sure they die because before sundown, before the beginning of the Sabbath, before the beginning of this holy day, they want the bodies taken care of and not hanging there on the sacred day. It is also where the women appear at sunrise on Sunday morning. They wait for the whole finish of the Sabbath buy the things they need after sundown, and then arrive as soon as the Sabbath is done in the morning, following the sunset of the Saturday, to be there to finish what they could not get done because it was too late in the day on the Friday. So to the Jews, this has always been important because that day is a reflection of the seventh day of the rest the pause of God as it's described in Genesis. So this repose, this rest was the day of rest. Not just as we go on later on, not just a moment, not just going to temple, not just going to synagogue. It was the day that was consecrated to God for the things of God to lift the mind from the things of this earth to prayer and contemplation of God. And to this day, this is exactly how Jews, faithful Jews, still observe this. It is why, as Maronites, we do not fast on Saturdays. Because though the Lord's day is the Sunday, the Saturday is still commemorates the day of creation. And it still has echoes of the ancient Shabbat. And so when Origen comments on this, He's writing on the fact that this day of rest was introduced into the law of Moses in order to detach Israel from mere worldly considerations, my job, paying my bills, my concerns, in order to bring them towards a more perfect practice of the spiritual Shabbat, of the spiritual Sabbath. So the very foundation for thousands of years now for the Jews and the Christians has been the foundation of the Lord's day and Shabbat in the Old Testament is to raise our eyes away from the world and to find God. This is why when you were children, Sunday was nothing other than sacred and family. In fact, as I was leaving Geneva in 2011, like I said, that world's gone now. I saw it in its last death throes in the 80s. In Geneva, everything was closed, including the restaurants. And that didn't bother them for centuries because, of course, the day was also dedicated to family. And of course, the French and the French culture, your midday lunch, as in the Middle East, is going to last for four hours. So you're just spending time with your family, eating and drinking, enjoying, and then normally at the end of that four-hour pause, you're going to be back in church to sing the evening office. So you're going to be at Mass in the morning, the divine and Eucharistic sacrifice, and then you're going to have the pause with the family in the middle, and then you're going to be back for the evening office to sing. But that we'll talk about in the weeks to come. The very foundation of the Lord's day is to elevate and to raise us, at least for a moment in the week, to orient us to the reason for our creation, which is God. Which is why in your catechisms it says that we keep holy the Lord's day. It's not a clock in for 90 minutes. It's the day which is held sacred to the Lord. And that's why St. Paul says in this chapter 5, he says, if there be any in Christ transformed in this death and resurrection as a new creation, a new creature. When the old things have passed away, behold, all things are made new. So that's just the consideration, even just what St. Paul is taking from the old law to realize that on New Sunday, what we're commemorating is the transformation of our minds, the transformation of our lives, so that we can pull ourselves out of the muck and the merely worldly concerns that necessarily involve what we do for most of our life 
And God gives us pause to stop for one moment, for one day, to turn that day towards holiness and to free us from the shackles of this valley of tears. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Almighty Lord in God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Agapitus. Remember, O oh God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of St. John Chrysostom on page 876. 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with the holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor, love and faith that are pleasing to God.
O Lord, on high, hidden from all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin, you are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. O Lord, you are adored by all angels, bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you. With purity and holiness, may we offer you an acceptable sacrifice, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our things. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming. Son of your majesty, he willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us, for he is your only Son. An sabe lachma mida kori shanto ubarachu kodesh waksu ya bil tarmida karo mara sabe khule mehne kul khul khulu deni ta fakhru dil dakhlo faikun wakhlaf sagiyen Thank 
Anna al-Qasa dam sich wo men hamra wo men mahayo. Marach wo kodesh. Wo ya bel talmida wo karo mara. Sabish tawa mehne kul khul. Hono deni tawa. De me hondi lundi antiki khadato. Do this in memory of me, each time you eat this bread and drink this cup. You remember my death until I come again. of God who can comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can place your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that this sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your holy altar in heaven the dwelling place of your hidden divinity, in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you, nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. That this bread, the body of Christ our God, be for us of a pledge of life to come. A body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light. A blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. O oh. oh Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults and forgiveness of sins and for the everlasting joy 
and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, charity, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Shadow Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priest, the Chaste Deacons, the Pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the word of truth so that they may spread it faithfully with justice and holiness. May they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. <coughs> Lord have mercy. For the poor and the dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and the distressed, and for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have Remember the Holy Fathers, the Prophets, Apostles, Preachers, Evangelists, Martyrs, and Confessors, especially the Holy and Glorious Blessed Ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, the ba Saint John the Baptist, the Messenger and Forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your Holy Church to your Son, Glorious St. Stephen, the Archdeacon and First Martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. O oh Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand as we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will that in all sin in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. giving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the High Priest who offered yourself as the Lamb through your mercy. May our prayer rise like incense which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. O Lord, our Lord, you sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity. 
and he accomplished his plan of salvation for us that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, the saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are thine. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O oh Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity that we may raise glory and thanks to you to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Thus be the name of the Lord. For he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy God, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for your life. Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
living as your body, to eat and the living as the truth, the lover of all people, have mercy on us.
Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these, your gifts and graces, and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls, for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy, and we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. O God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy to rest your right hand, full of blessings, upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. So first of all, a sincere and hearty thank you for all of the Easter gifts that you gave so generously this year. It would have been also in the bulletin, but if I had added it in, it would have thrown off the even number of pages, and then I would have to have made up another page and a half of reflections to give us an even number. I especially thank you also for all the baked goods. And as I took them all in last week, I looked at the servers and I said, and they wonder why the priests all become fat. They were absolutely delightful, so thank you again from the bottom of the heart. And then just as a last note, please don't socialize within the church once we're done with the liturgy, and you can visit outside or downstairs or wherever you wish. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.